Hey. Hi. Hey, Rachel. <laughs> hey there. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for joining us. We're so yeah, happy, happy to be here. Really, I just wanted to keep it real casual just to give uh, attendees to our May event a little background information on you. And thanks again for Tenant and Associates for making it happen and bringing you in. So Rachel is going to be part of the 11 a.m. panel discussion where we ask uh, some top brands and top designers where they get their inspiration from. And she'll also be doing a trunk show at 1 p.m. back here in the tenant showroom. So you don't want to miss that when you're watching this video. So without further ado, Rachel, I just wanted to give people a little background on you. And if you could just tell them how you got into textile design. and Sure. We well, first of all, I'm excited to come to Michigan. Thank you for inviting me. And I'm excited to show the collection. Um, so I have always loved textiles, even since I was a little kid. My grandmother, she was a weaver, and she did sewing and knitting and crochet and all of the um, beautiful needle arts. So I learned to sew in elementary school, probably like third grade. And then I got into making my own clothes and middle school and then high school. Um, I got a sewing machine for Christmas one year. So um, I've always been aware of fabric. It kind of started with an interest in fashion. And in my spare time, I was always working on textile related things. I went to college originally as an art major and did mostly painting and printmaking, but then I was doing um, making things with, with textiles in my spare time. So I switched to the Rhode Island School of Design and became a textile major. But at that point, it was the 90s, so there wasn't much internet around, like none. And um, I never really thought about a career in fabric. I just knew that I liked fabric and textiles. And it was on a field trip when I was at school that we visited New York. And all of a sudden, this seed got planted like, wait, I can do this for a job. Yes. So I, I went to New York City. And um, I got a job designing horrible theme sweaters, like Christmas sweaters, but it was a job to get me there. And then eventually I got a job at Pollock working in wovens for home furnishings. So it kind of started with fashion. From the sweater company, I went to Echo Scarves, and then I went to Pollock. And it's been a long time that I've been at Pollock. Mm -hmm. I started there in 2000. So that's my very quick history. Very, thank you. Yeah, and uh, actually, Don Tennant told me, I think, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Tennant is actually the longest showroom outside of, obviously, Pollock's home studio that has repped Pollock. So that's a nice credo to... Yeah, I don't know how many years it is, but it's it's probably close to 30, wouldn't you say, okay. Sean? 30. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Pollock, we, we launched... The, I wasn't with the company then, but we launched in the late 80s. I think the first collection was 1988. Right, very cool. Yeah. And uh, just a little tidbit about me, Tenant and Pollock always holds a special place in my heart because actually, if you remember back in like 2014, I proposed to my wife right around the corner <gasps> some Pollock wings over here. Oh, you did? She was, yeah, I love that. She was, she was working what? for, a, for a, a, a designer at the time and That's we've been dating forever and we, we just... I wanted to find a way to surprise her. And I was like, I'm going to catch her at work. So right I, I worked with the tenants and they're. Well, that, well, that's the first time I've ever heard that happening. <laughs> well, yeah. I love that. Well, without further ado, we can just go into the collection here. Did you want to tell us a little bit about your new collection, Trim and Proper? We got it on. Yes. So um, this is our spring collection, Trim and Proper. Um, it is really showcasing what we do best in the studio. So we, when people think of a textile designer, the first thing they think of is pattern, but there's so much more that goes into a textile besides the pattern. So there's the yarn, there's the construction, the color, uh, the luster, the three-dimensional feel. So we are considering the whole cloth. So we build a fabric like an architect from the ground up. So in this collection, there, there are some great examples of that. The fabric that's right behind you in the center, which is called Trim and Proper, the namesake of the collection, um, that is a really incredible textile. You'll have to see it in person, but it has hand-woven linen fringe that is appliqued on the surface. And with 
movement, when you're kind of ruffling the surface, the fringe kind of lifts off of the face and becomes alive. And this was quite um, an exciting design process. So the ground is a, a woven cotton, then there's embroidery, and then there's applique of this hand-woven fringe. So that, um, that fabric really shows what we do best. Not only is it interesting with construction, the color and the striping is quite exciting as well. Um, above you, we have beautiful embroidered Greta. Um, so Greta has a few different colors of these blooms. It is embroidered with a matte yarn. So it doesn't have like a silky luster. It's more casual and has kind of a folky feel to it. And I love that one colorway that's behind you. It has sort of a retro vibe. Um, it has kind of greens and oranges and pinks. Okay. It's, it's really exciting. Um, there's also a theme within the collection of uh, checks and boxes. And you'll kind of see that like in the top center, that's Boxing Day. You can see it in the below center with trim and proper. And then to, to the left with the, um, the felted check, which is called Union Square. So there is a theme of squares and boxes. And sometimes they're very rigid. And sometimes they're kind of broken up in a more organic way. Very cool. And there's also a range of surfaces and end uses. There's a hospitality fabric, there's high-end residential, there's wool, there's outdoor. Uh, so we like to cover uh, a wide range of end uses in every collection. Well, what, and one thing I really like that you do, and I remember the trunk show where you came a few years back, you really to show the process behind with the sketches mm -hmm. and and also, if anyone's not, follow Pollock on Instagram. Rachel's been doing some great videos with her design team. And I remember watching one that you did on this fabric with your with the one lead designer. And yeah, they use like a hand blocking. Huh? OK, so that that is um, that is a print, but it was inspired by the artwork that was created uh, with a potato print. So Jenya Mayakov, who was the designer that worked on it, she literally carved a potato and then dipped it into ink and then stamped it. So you get a beautiful kind of modeled surface from the surface of the potato. And we were able to achieve that in a digital print. So it's exciting for us to show a, a print as well because historically we're mostly wovens. But in this collection, there are two prints for hospitality. One is in the middle uh, left. Um, it's a little hard to see on the screen, but it's this beautiful concentric um, dots that have this watercolory feel. Well, well, thank you. Then really just wanted this to be a quick introduction for you and to get people to sign up for the 11 a.m. panel discussion and as well as the 1 p.m. Function. Yeah, so I'm excited about the panel. That should be a great, it's a great lineup. Yeah. And then um, I do encourage everybody to come to the studio, um, to the showroom so I can show the collection and you can touch and feel it in person because that's that's how you really need to experience fabric yeah, in person. And they'll have some treats for everyone too. Oh, well, everyone loves treats. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, well, thank you. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to having you. Uh, thank you. See you uh, next month. Yep, next month. Come quick. Okay, bye. See you soon. See ya.